Okay, time to sort of to do my thing really. Time to start talking about it. <laughs> I have an odour basically. Um, and the odour can come through my skin, uh, in my urine, on my breath. Um, and I just have this odour problem. Well, why didn't you talk, you know, talk to me or... I think to mom. start off with, I didn't talk to anybody because... Well, obviously I was embarrassed and I did feel ashamed. Um, but it's sad that you didn't tell me and mum yeah. about it, you know, because we would want to help you because, you know, it's family and I don't think you should ever suffer on your own. I just am not the sort of person that ever found it easy to sort of talk no, about. Have you, have you ever detected any change no. in me? And that's, all, that's why I feel even sadder that I haven't noticed. So I think one of the things that will... You know, that I haven't noticed that you're unhappy. You've been unhappy because, to me, you've always looked... Being a, a, a carer, you're always caring for other people. You've always looked the strong person looking after other people. You needed somebody to care for you, Carol. I feel so cross because that I haven't noticed it. Yeah. For the first time since she was a teenager, Carol allows herself to be hugged by her sister. It sort of upset my sister a bit, I think, you know, but I don't regret it at all. I'm really glad. They've all put it in proportion for me and all said, you know, it's not a big deal, you're still you. You know, we could have supported you. When we said goodbye today, I gave a hug. I mean, wow, I gave a hug. Didn't feel funny at all. Just felt great. Buoyed up by her new sense of openness, Carol feels ready to take even more risks in a bid to start living a normal life. heard of the smell of fear. Does it really exist? Do emotions have a smell? Smells have always been heavily linked to emotions. Um, and we know that animals give off scents for these things. For example, if one member of a group of a species gives off a smell of fear, that's a trigger for everyone else to, to maybe fight or, or flight. Some people argue that we have completely lost the ability to go to our animal natures and, and recognize fear and so forth. And so we thought it'd be fun just to see if anyone could actually smell things like fear, happiness, sadness. We tested the theory out by getting Martin to ask three volunteers to watch three different types of film. One is subjected to a scary movie. Another has a laugh enjoying the funny film. And the third holds back the tears watching a weepy. <laughs> As they enjoy their movies, everyone has to wear a piece of cloth under their arms to soak up the sweat. <laughs> It's in the sweat that you can find a chemical that signals our feelings to each other. All pads look identical, but each one contains a different emotion. There's sadness, fear, and happiness. Now it's time to put our animal natures to the test. I'd like you to tell me which of these has the smell of fear. Okay. Each girl has to take a good sniff and decide which pad fits which emotion. For the first two girls, the sweaty task doesn't go down too well. It would be that one. That one? Yes. Then things start to smell a little sweeter. I think it's that one. And finally, I'd like you to tell me which of these smells of fear. Fear? Okay, no problem. Our fourth sniffer practically shoves the pads up her nose. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hang on. 
it's this one. It's fair. That's correct. Mm. <laughs> That's good. I'd like you to tell me which one you think is the smell of happiness. Happiness, okay. Hmm. It's this one. It's happiness. Correct. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> There's one left. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you could tell me what you think the emotion that represents. Okay, this one. One, I would say sadness. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Fabulous! The outcome of the experiment was, was very interesting and quite a surprise to me, to be quite honest. Um, one lady actually managed to detect all three smells, which was quite, quite remarkable. Maybe we do still have that animal sense deep within us. Well, there's certainly a bit of animal left in some of us, Martin. Yes. So it looks like emotions really do cause a stink. We can pick up different feelings from each other from our smell alone. Yet we live in an increasingly sanitized world where we spend billions a year trying to mask our body odors. We haven't always been embarrassed by our smell. Cities 200 years ago had a very strong smell of sewage. Sewers were open. And it was only really in the 19th century that sewers started to get closed off. And so people now were aware for the first time of their own smell. But why do we do this? If personal smell is so important to us, why do we spend so much time and money trying to cover it up? What has turned smell into such a dirty word? About 1850s onwards, people started to believe that the way forward for civilization was not to smell like animals. And so that the mark of being civilized was to have no smell whatsoever. So there's been pressure ever since for people to be almost paranoid about how they smell, hence the huge business in deodorants, fragrances and so forth. For Rachel, paranoia about personal smell rules her life. Today, she's back at the University College London Hospital to find out if the smell that has dominated the way she lives is fish odour syndrome. I'm feeling a bit apprehensive about it, really, but not quite sure what's going to happen. I really think it is that condition, but if it is, then I'll be quite surprised. Okay, so you're back for the results of the test we sent off last time. Mm. So we sent the urine off to Sheffield, mm. and the results coming back show that there is trimethylamine in the urine, which means that you do have trimethylamine in the urine. Okay. Um, which is a diagnosis, so that's, that's good from that point of view. After 14 years of feeling like someone who could not control her order, Rachel has become the 301st person to be diagnosed with fish odour syndrome in the UK. And it doesn't have to be fish odour? It's pretty much like ammonia and I think it can smell ammoniacal, right. um, like smelling salts if you like. But, you know, right. probably, um, and that is quite unpleasant, but I wouldn't necessarily say it would smell like fish to everybody now. Right. I was quite surprised by that, wasn't expecting that. And I feel quite relieved, actually. It's um, a long time not knowing what it was and just thinking it was, you know, it was me. It was, um, that it was my fault. And now I know that it's, um, it's a medical condition, so... It's a relief, really, to have a diagnosis. <laughs> 